In our election essay, leader Herman Mashaba says he warned the new council of illegal mining threats uh, to the gas pipeline infrastructure in 2017. But prior to leaving the mayoral post in 2019, Mashaba is uh, joining us now for more uh, on that uh, score. Mr. Mashaba, good evening. Good to have you and thank you very much uh, for uh, coming on tonight. Well, I mean, firstly, when we come in, let's, let's start with um, uh, mineral resources and energy saying no there's no mining there there's no mining that takes place there so this cannot be linked to illegal mining well uh, first of all uh, thank you for uh, Tabo and good evening to the listeners uh, this is a very very unfortunate situation where uh, anyone can really already make a determination what uh, it's not actually the problem before even a week, almost a week later, we don't know what actually the cause of this problem uh, is. And obviously one uh, never made any pronouncement that this uh, is as a result of illegal mining, but what I raised in 2017-18, I still maintain that um, the Zamazamas uh, and illegal mining actually poses a very, very serious risk uh, to the residents uh, of uh, Johannesburg uh, and the surrounding areas. And unfortunately, uh, I let it, uh, the serious risk um, uh, to the department because obviously mining is not the competency of the city. It is something outside our control. This matter was brought to my attention by uh, Sasol and uh, Transnet because uh, these uh, illegal miners uh, were using dangerous explosives mm. next to their, um, uh, their gas uh, and petrol lines, saying that in the event of something going wrong, it will definitely go wrong. And uh, when we, you have a case like what happened last week, um, I think South Africans have got a right uh, to really question uh, the role of uh, Zamazamas in this matter. Now... Being, ha 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 haven't been rather at the helm of the city at, at some point. What is happening on the uh, service duct of uh, Lillian Ngoi, previously known as Bree Street? What's happening underneath there? Because we are told that there was a build up of uh, methane mixed with uh, oxygen, and then there was a spark, and then there was compression to the point that it blew up the street because uh, the manhole there is sealed. Does that but then uh, I, I listened to the, the mayor earlier on being interviewed on your station uh, um, and uh, some of the things or most of the stuff he was actually saying does not really make any sense because obviously if there was a spark then uh, how come then we did not really have uh, any flames and, and, uh, and, and fire. So I, I think it's actually quite disturbing to, to really land uh, a week uh, later that the city is not even in a position to really know what actually caused that problem. Unfortunately, Tabo, it's not only illegal mining that's uh, really posing a risk uh, to our cities. Our cities, uh, particularly Johannesburg, of which I uh, had a privilege uh, to say for three years, I mean, that city 30 years ago was one of the, the, the latest, uh, newest cities in the world. If you look at uh, the cities all over the world, Johannesburg only built, what, 130 odd years ago, and obviously started the development really mainly in, in the in the in, in the early 60s and so forth. So Johannesburg, by world standards, it's, it's a new city. However, within 10 years of our new government, uh, I don't know whether they forgot or something went wrong. They focused on changing street names instead of uh, maintenance and building new infrastructure to capacitate new residents coming into the city. The city turned into a slum. By the time I took over, did a study, by 2017, I released that study of infrastructure backlog, discovered that there's 170 billion rents of infrastructure backlog in the city of Johannesburg. So, and over and above that, uh, Tabo, what's uh, of concern that uh, South Africans have got to be aware about. It's not only the Zamazamas and the lack of uh, maintenance and building new infrastructure. It's about allowing criminal activities uh, destroy our infrastructure with complete, complete impunity. Mm. That's really something that is of major concern because uh, we've opened our borders allowing uh, drug dealers uh, to bring drugs to destroy our youth mm. and in the process this youth then destroy our infrastructure because every piece of steel, and they don't care whether it's on a bridge or anywhere, 
They take this bra this uh, uh, in front this steel, take it uh, to this uh, scrap uh, scrap uh, scrap uh, 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 dealers, and what they do with it. Uh, process it and send it out of the country. And what happens? We see it with uh, everything really very shaky. So I think we are really facing massive, massive challenges as a country. And if we're not going to arrest this one of these days, we'll see a major explosion. We'll see really something that would dread or to even imagine. Yeah. You see, and, and it's this question of a week later, we still don't know what the source is. That really brings a whole lot of, 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 of questions to my mind. But, and, and one of the questions is, and purely in the realm of speculation here, what are the odds what? of, of uh, uh, the officials coming up with what the source is? Because scientists are saying, look, if this was a leaking pipe and it exploded in such a way that it exploded, Anybody by the time they got underground would have seen this thing continuing to leak and it would have been leaking in a very obvious way. It would not have taken us a week to figure out where the source of this leaking gas was, was, was coming from. Uh, and, and, and we are still now sitting trying to determine where it's coming from. Do you think these officials are ever going to find out where this thing is? Well, unfortunately, the, the caliber of uh, officials that we've got in our municipalities, and it's not only in Johannesburg, it's actually literally to most of the municipalities in this country, not only municipalities, up to national government, uh, from our politicians up to the administrators, this cadre deployment has been a case in this country uh, that uh, it's uh, uh, putting us where we are today because um, senior people running government are not there because of what they know, is because of who they know. So that's why we, we end up uh, with uh, people who don't really know uh, what is what is happened. You, you might obviously find that the tower, and this is not a joke, you might find that right now uh, um, the, the government and the officials are actually looking at uh, the, um, um, tenders uh, to, to, to help them determine so that money can be made. Because for them, uh, every, every tragedy in this country is an opportunity for them to make money. Perhaps so you, this delay is because they can't find someone prepared to cooperate with them to, uh, to sort out this matter and make money in the process. That's a, that could really be a possibility because we've experienced it um, uh, during uh, COVID and, and other uh, cases of um, uh, tragedies in this country where officials, instead of um, taking appropriate uh, timely actions, what they do, they wait uh, for opportunities to make money. They see this as an opportunity. Having warned them, uh, particularly in your case, about the effects and the impact of illegal mining and, and just legal activity of vandalizing and destroying of infrastructure that is taking place. Then the next question is what the, the, the mayor there tried to, to answer as well, is a threat of a similar disaster occurring uh, again. Very, very extremely high, not just high. Uh, if you rate it uh, uh, from uh, the rate uh, the, uh, 1 to 10, I can tell you we're sitting at a very, very high risk. I, I know in Johannesburg, surrounding areas, uh, Ikuruleni up to, to Mohali City, because in 2017-18, when uh, the, this matter was brought to my attention, I actually uh, wrote first to, to the Minister of Minerals and Energy, and when and I was, I was not getting any response, just even an acknowledgement as executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg, bringing something of this serious nature to their attention. What they did, they decided uh, to report me to the Human Rights Commission for, for being xenophobic. I don't understand what the xenophobia had to really do with, um, with, with this particular matter. Even up to today, I've not really received any any uh, uh, acknowledgement. I then uh, this, uh, took a decision, invited the media. I was I was accompanied by the media throughout the day, showing them all the risk sites. The biggest area where there's a serious serious uh, risk is an area next to the FNB Stadium uh, and uh, Rivali area and those surrounding areas. Those communities are sitting on a time bomb because uh, those uh, Zama Zamas are still there even up to today. Now, you are part of the city of Johannesburg as Action SA and, and therefore very close to, 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 to the processes in that sense. 
we know that a road has got to be rebuilt uh, to, 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 to an extent and some infrastructure, uh, probably electricity and water infrastructure that would need to be uh, addressed. A lot of money is going to be spent. I don't know whether it will be coming from the city, we're coming from province uh, or will be coming from national because this has been uh, a disaster. What, what is your plan around ensuring that what we saw during COVID-19 when people were dying uh, and money was stolen doesn't happen now? Well, look, uh, Tab, I'm sure you're aware, Action SA is in opposition benches in the city of uh, Johannesburg. So, obviously, we very far, f our, our councillors are very far from engagement uh, with the officials uh, themselves. They have to really wait uh, for the executive mayor. He's the one who's supposed to be leading this charge. By now, if anyone was actually efficient in the work, they should already be having, uh, have uh, really put a, a team together to says what had transpired, how much money is needed, and because the city does not have, is not going to have the money to repair that road uh, and, and that infrastructure immediately. What you do then, that's when you then prepare a report to the province so that that area is declared as a disaster area so that you can get uh, special uh, funding from national government uh, through the province. But I uh, don't really believe that um, uh, the current mayor and his, uh, his current executive that are aware about such processes to really be necessary because what happened last week when this whole thing took over, we, we saw the premier already obviously disregarding the laws. Uh, in fact, I remember asking if the city was already under administration without uh, us as residents being informed. But as he is now disappeared because uh, some issues uh, were raised. Right now, the, uh, the, uh, the, the executive mayor is not the city manager. He's the one who's supposed to be leading the, this um, process on ensuring that uh, they can do um, preparations uh, and assessment uh, so that um, they can see how much money they require and then make applications to, uh, to the, to the uh, national government through the province. That's when you then ask uh, for the intervention of, of uh, the premier. But uh, I don't know, as I say, I, I see the last few days is completely disappeared. Maybe he's gone on holiday or something because he must be tired. He really worked hard yeah. last week. I think I saw his picture is at the ANC's uh, local government intervention summit. I'm sure that that's, uh, has been keeping him uh, a little bit busy at the moment. But the other question that uh, I'm sure, uh, I don't know if Action SA would, 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 would have asked, there are people, of course, who have been injured uh, in, in, in this process and, and, and whether they have received any support, and we know that at least one life uh, has been lost. Well, I think uh, the city has got an obligation, and the city does not really have the resources. I think, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a well-known fact that uh, it, uh, the city is under serious financial strain. That's why, as an executive mayor, you need to really work very fast, but then you need to competent, committed uh, civil servants being led by the city manager, but obviously with the direction of uh, the executive mayor, but I uh, don't really believe the Executive, the current executive mayor has got the capacity or the knowledge of where to start. Uh, he listens to everybody else and uh, he takes instructions from them. Actually, they say leader. Herman Mashab, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, that is uh, a leader of Action SA there uh, and uh, responding, of course, to the challenges in the city of Johannesburg uh, following that explosion and what he knew in the year 2017 up to 2019 or so when he was at the helm uh, of the city.